Hi guys, my name is Matthew O, and I'm an environment artist at Ubisoft. Today I want to walk you through my Project Eden scene, which was GPU rendered using Octane Renderer. The reason why I did this was because I wanted to try out GPU rendering versus CPU rendering, because I found that my CPU pipeline was just getting really slow. So I want to show you today using an RTX 2080 Ti, and this is because with the RTX cards, we have Turing chips instead of Pascal chips. And those chips are rendering ray tracing in packages like this at a much faster rate than the Pascal cards were before. Uh, we also have a, a bunch more CUDA cores than we had, and also way more video memory than I need for a scene of this scale. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at my props pipeline and see how using modularity can speed up the whole process. And hopefully this leads to you guys having more fun and also creating better art. So let's do that. So after watching way too much of The Expanse, I thought it would be a really good idea for me to make uh, a sci-fi scene. And uh, I'd seen lots of really cool results with GPU renders on ArtStation, so I thought it would be a nice little experiment. I really wanted to build a hydroponics lab or an oxygen farm because I've, I felt like it could be a really cool way to get lots of colour into quite a kind of monochrome environment. I didn't really want to do it in a game engine because of uh, how slow the process can be of, for getting my designs through into a game engine and making them run at real time. Um, and I wanted this to be a fast, fun experiment um, just to kind of like try out a new, new scene. Um, I also didn't want to CPU render because I'm using quite a kind of clean um, glossy environment. I want lots of bounce light and I also want lots of subsurface um, scattering on the actual leaves of the plants. And if I was to do that on a CPU, I think I would get very, very slow render times. I had a, a look at quite a few different um, GPU rendering solutions and Octane gave me really good speeds, but also really nice renders. And it also worked really well with the rounded shader that I like to use in Modo. Um, for the foliage itself, um, the foliage was um, cheese plant and uh, fern atlases that were downloaded from the Megascans library, the Quixel Megascans library. And then the plants themselves were just modeled by me, not using any foliage tools. And then these same two plants are basically replicated all the way around the scene. They're just instanced around the scene. And then they're rotated to different angles and scaled. So I'm not using multiple variations of the assets. I'm just rotating and scaling just two separate assets. Um, the reason why I was doing this is sort of thinking more in a game engine type workflow. Um, I'm just purely instancing so that the mesh memory is kept really low and the texture memory is kept really low. Um, and then also it just saves me a lot of time because I'm not having to build several variations of the plants, especially if you can't really notice the difference in the renders anyway. So then once I'd done that, I also uh, wanted to build my scene in a very modular way. So for similar reasons, I built sort of one wall module on zero, zero, and then I repeated it all the way along to build these, these wall sections. This is partially in order to keep my mesh memory low and my texture memory low, but also it means I can just iterate on one module and see the whole scene updating as I do it. So a big part of my process is just to make sure that it's fast and fun for me. Um, and then on top of that, I'm just thinking with performance in mind. Um, at the end of the day, um, this doesn't actually matter too much, especially when you're using a card like this, because I have 11,000 megabytes of memory in video memory, and this scene ends up using below 800 megabytes. But um, it's just the kind of the way I was thinking when I was building, and now I know that I could basically push it much further with this amount of video memory. The other thing I do is I'm not UVing anything, because again, I don't want to spend any time UVing. So all of these textures are just are just projected um, straight onto the models on zero zero, and then that's why you tend to get this sort of repeating pattern um, on every piece because it's actually just projecting onto the original, and then these are the originals repeating around the scene. Uh, with my decals, I'm just basically floating textures on planes, and then I'm using alpha to cut them out, um, and then they don't cast shadows, so they just look like decals on the walls. And you'll also notice that on most of my assets, I don't really do any beveling. Um, I don't want to spend lots of time on control loops or bevels. So I use the round edge shader in Modo to kind of bevel all of those edges for me. And then it's also a really nice way of blending shapes together. 
This basically means that when I'm designing a shape like this, I can just have fun with kind of iterating on the design and changing it quickly and not having to spend any time on uh, cleaning up the actual design to get a fast uh, or cleaning up the design uh, to make sure it actually looks good. Uh, and then I don't have to spend time after that UVing it all. I want to change my mind an hour later and think that something doesn't look good and not have to think about all of that work I have to do again. I just want it to be fast and iterative basically. So if I show you the process of how the pieces are blocked out and then placed, um, I think that will help you to gain an understanding of how the scene was built relatively quickly. So basically, the pieces are just placed out in a very repetitive fashion. Um, and then obviously it's the same with these hives that are kind of like heavily influenced by Star Citizen. Um, and then the same with these kind of hydroponics elements and the same with the plants. So really there's nothing, there's very few things in the scene um, that are actually just modeled as a one-off, um, just so that I get lots of reuse out of my modeling. So if I have a quick look at my actual uh, items, then you can see that these things are, they're all just instances of the original. And then the original is basically placed at zero. So if I have a look at my wall module, then what I've done is I've modeled an original piece at zero, zero, and then I have just repeated that around in order to give me um, the full scene that you see at the end. So if I was to um, go to my renders and choose room, which is my actual render for the room, and hit my normal CPU renderer, you can see that this process would take, I don't know, an hour or two to get a, uh, a full render for this room because of the amount of bounce lighting and uh, subsurface scattering going on. Uh, but if I was to bring up Octane now, then it just needs a second to actually load everything into the um, scene. And then you can see that this is already at 1080p it's cleaning up really quite quickly. And this is quite a complex amount of lighting, so it gets much faster than this if you're doing something quite simple. Um, you can see it still would take an hour to completely finish, but that's a really sort of pristine render. And after just sort of 10 minutes, this would look really, really nice. You can also see here that I'm using 712 megabytes of video memory, and I have 11,200 available. So yeah, I'm obviously nowhere near pushing the card. Um, but I can, it's really, really, I think you can totally tell the benefit if you prefer, if you compare that straight to a CPU render, and then you just see the speed at which this is going. The other thing that's really useful is that you can just select a small area of the render, and then it'll start to clean that up um, and ignore the rest of the render. So that means what you could do is you could just select one small area and then iterate on that inside your modeling package, um, just to really nail down the look of something specific before moving on to just sort of the whole scene. And then this can also be just the general speed of how fast the lighting updates can be really, really, or how fast the render updates can be really nice for when you're getting your lighting set up because maybe you just don't need it to be super crisp, but you just need to see how the light is bouncing around the scene. So if I was want to repeat some of the modules and then also see how they're kind of affecting the lighting, then what I could do is basically choose kind of a small area and then say I could pull down the sort of size of the window so it's not right in the way, bring this up to 100% and then kind of leave this here. And then what I could do is just come in here and then work like normal, like you would in a game engine or like in Maya or Max or Moto or whatever, if you're just building a scene. So what I would wanna do is just sort of repeat this around and then you can see that this is already updating here and it's updating extremely fast and I'm not getting any viewport lag. So if I was to say I wanted one that was kind of like falling off the wall and maybe it's a little bit lower, then I could say, all right, how do I feel like that looks? And then I could just check it out here and it's obviously really fast. Um, so I would just build in a way that yeah, I'm kind of happy with basically. And the thing that's most amazing is just the fact that it's like, it's really, really quite fast to give me these results. Um, so yeah, I just, I don't know how to get this kind of feedback any quicker in any other kind of render platform. Um, 
So I think that's that's why I found this process really quite enjoyable. Um, but also it really allowed me to just be more creative. So now I'll basically show some of the techniques I'm using with Octane and also with my props in order to just sort of speed up um, how quickly you can actually build those and how much fun you can have with them. Okay, so I've removed the rest of the scene just to speed up my renders a little bit. And I want to just show how I iterate on my actual design um, whilst kind of using my, um, Octane at the same time just to see how it would look. Um, so if I was just to bring up Octane now, and then we have a, a sort of a free cam that's centered on the middle of the asset. So I'll just grab that. So as I mentioned before, all of our UVs are um, projected in the scene, so we're not having to UV map, which obviously speeds us way up. And then on top of that, we're using a rounded shader in Modo in order to make it so that we're not having to um, bevel all of the edges. So we get pretty nice results. I'll just zoom way in on this guy. And then if I bring this up to 100%, then you can see that he looks kind of pretty nice and beveled up, but his actual um, modeling is all very hard and quite harsh. But that just sort of speeds up all of the sort of smaller bevels. And then combined with no UVs, it just really kind of speeds up the process of the design. So what I want to do is just model a piece into it. And you can kind of see how you get the feedback um, on the design itself. Um, so I was just thinking I could model some kind of handles into the bottom here. So I will just go back to my perspective camera. Um, and then I'm just going to leave this up just to show kind of how fast the feedback is. As you can see, just with a single 2080 Ti in my machine, I'm not getting any GPU lag at all in my viewport whilst GPU rendering here. And I'll just sort of grab a smaller section just to really kind of refine the area that it's rendering. Um, and this is 100% on a, on a smaller area on a 1080p render. Um, so it's, it's still like a pretty decent resolution. So I will just grab this area here and I'll turn my symmetry on and as you can see when I do this I'm not actually um, you can see that I'm not doing any of the UVing so I'm just gonna kind of pull this down here and I'll pull this down here beep, 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 beep. and um, yeah the UVs are just sort of fixing as I go along this could just look like slip UV at the moment but you'll see what I'm doing so then if I was to pull this in here and I'm just fixing the normal maps as I go, or oh, sorry, the uh, normals on the edges as I go. Um, so then I'll just put in loop here and I just want a little bit more detail here. So I will select those faces and just pull those out. Um, and then you can see that I'm kind of getting that, that shape and uh, as you can see as well, I'm still getting the UVs. Um, maybe I just want to pull this back a little bit more. And then I'm thinking this could be its own kind of, it could be a hole here for some random reason. Um, and if I just go to the free cam, then we can see that it's all kind of beveling up quite nicely and it looks really sharp um, so I'll just zoom out a little bit and then leave that kind of like that so then maybe what I want is just the actual handle so I'll copy this bring this out extrude this extrude this And then I could just grab all of these edges and just bevel those. Just get it kind of roughly even. As you can see, I'm not being like super neat about it, but that doesn't really matter too much because again, this is kind of, kind of treating it like concept art. And then what we could do is say, let's pull these in. And then we'll pull these 
in again. And then I'm just going to triangulate those faces because um, GPU rendering doesn't love um, n-gons. So it's not always a problem, but it can be a bit annoying. So I'm just going to scale those down a little bit. And then I think it would be cool if I was to copy those and just scale this like this. I'm just going to scale it inside the model a little bit. And then the rounded shader will handle making sure it looks like it's kind of modeled into the shape. I'm just going to do this. And then maybe I'll just be a little bit sloppy here and grab this loop. I'll grab this loop, grab all of this, and I'll grab these. I'll just scale this. And I'm just going to do kind of something like this. I'll just cap those. Now maybe this will look a bit a bit weird, but I'll just kind of do something like this. Bridge those. And as you can see, I'm just sort of fixing my normals as I model. And then I'm just going to scale it down so it looks like it sort of fits in the hole. And what I want is to get this over here and this over here. And then we'll just get that to kind of nest. I don't want to go too deep. Sort of want it to stick out like a hand can actually get a hold of it. I'll just scale it down in this direction a little bit. Maybe bring it out this way. And I just want to take these faces and just pull them way back. I don't really know what this face is. So that could cause some AO issues, but I won't worry too much about it right now because it seems to be rendering fine. Maybe I'll just see if that helps. Yeah, it just gives me a bit more depth there. So now you can basically see kind of the process I'm using. Um, so if I just turn this off, then you can see that I'm getting kind of these kind of pretty cool little shapes. And obviously I'm not having to UV and I'm not really having to do much beveling. I'm just building the shapes and they look pretty good. So if I was to go back to the actual room, we have a look at the scene. Then you can see now that these handles are modeled in all the way along. Um, and as you can see, it's pretty kind of pain free for me to do that. So now I'll just I'll grab the free cam again, um, rather than grabbing a camera that was already set up. Um, so we go to free cam. And then we'll just turn this render area off. And then with the free cam, I'm just going to go to WASD. And then we're going to just come and have a quick look at these. Oh, something's weird. Okay. I think my WASD movement acts weirdly when the render is open. But yeah, now you can see that these are repeating all the way along and it's updating really quickly. So I don't do a lot of modeling while I'm actually looking at the scene because the rendering for the whole scene is obviously much slower. But uh, it's really easy for me to just look at the um, the free cam at zero, 0, and sort of model to that. So as you can see, I could model away quite happily and leave that in the bottom corner and see how the rendered result would actually look. And then just as a quick reminder, then this is what would happen if I was using my CPU renderer. So we could leave this running and I could speak to you again in an hour and a half. Or we could just do what we've been doing for the last sort of few minutes. So I hope that's been useful. And um, I hope this helps you to think about how you could use GPU rendering in the future. 
and maybe also some of the techniques I've shown to help with your kind of overall design. Um, these rounded shader techniques and also the projected uh, texture techniques could be baked down and sent to a game engine quite easily and you can even bake with the GPU so if you're worried about bake times then that can be sped up too and uh, yeah good luck thank you very much cheers